Hey everybody, today we're talking about um, 4 or 5, which is graph of a rational function. So again, it's pretty similar to what we did on 4 4, um, just with extra practice. So uh, the main objective is to be able to analyze the graph of the rational function. So um, why we're doing this is because graphing utilities like calculators and Desmos uh, make the task of graphing rational functions less time consuming. However, the results of the algebraic analysis must be taken into account before drawing conclusions. Uh, for example, holes in the graph are too difficult to see in graphs. Vertical asymptotes and holes can be determined by analyzing the denominator and the numerator. If there's an oblique or slant asymptote, you need to do long division or use another method. Remember the placeholders, if there's a zero that you should put for a coefficient for terms that are not in an equation. For example, x cubed plus 2x will need placeholders 0x squared and 0. Okay, so for your steps on analyzing the graph, first factor the numerator and the denominator and find the domain, which has to do with using the denominator Write the rational function in lowest forms or lowest terms because that way you can see whether something can cancel out or not. Locate the intercepts such as the x intercept and the y intercept. Um, locate the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptote or slant asymptote. Um, determine which points, if any, intersect. And then graph it, and then use those same steps to graph by hand. Okay, so those are the steps. So it's pretty similar to what we did before. Um, so let's jump into the problems. On the first one, it says the graph for the rational function sometimes intersects an oblique asymptote. Um, that is true. Remember, you might have an oblique asymptote if you have um, something like that where this would be your oblique asymptote. Um, and sometimes it can get intersected because you might have a middle piece. So um, that is true. Uh, the graph of a rational function sometimes has a hole. Um, that's true because you can think x plus 2 times x minus 3 over x plus 2 times, um, let's just put x plus 5. Um, that would have a hole at x equal negative 2. So sometimes when you're graphing them, um, if we just do the regular parent one, um, it would look like, whoops, this side, there and there. Um, and then sometimes it's like 1 over x with a hole would look like this. That's a hole at x equal 2, for example. Um, so when we're drawing it on paper, we put the little bubble right there. It's not a filled in circle, it's just a regular circle. Okay, on this one it says to analyze the graph. Um, and so we set our denominator equal to zero. So um, x equal zero as well as x plus 14 equals zero. So we get negative 14. <clears throat> now based on our numerator, those are both vertical asymptotes. Both are vertical asymptotes. Uh, since the numerator didn't match exactly. Now, when you graph that, it would look like this. X plus 5 in the numerator. And then X times X plus 14 in the denominator. 
Oh, um, I'm glad this showed up. If it says error cannot accept change, that means I forgot a little time sign. If you just have a term like x, you need a little time sign in front of your parentheses. Um, so then it worked. Now, if you don't zoom out, you only think you have one asymptote. But um, we'll just zoom out. So window for zoom out a few times. And then you can actually see you do have two asymptotes. So this would be um, all real numbers except for those two places, which are your vertical asymptotes. Now, um, like we said in 4.4, you would have a horizontal asymptote um, if it's proper. And in this case it is because it's x basically over x times x, or x over x squared. And if your denominator exponent is bigger than your numerator, then it is proper. And then you pick the correct graph. Okay, so that's number three. Um, on this one, if we follow their steps, they said to factor first and to simplify it. So we're going to have four factored out, and then it's x plus one. And then we're going to have seven factored out, and it's x plus three. What that's going to help us with in particular is when we get to the horizontal asymptote, if the powers were the same, which they are, then the horizontal asymptote uh, would be the ratio of the coefficients. And for the other part, um, we just would set um, x plus 3 equal to 0, so x is negative 3, which says your domain is everything except for that. And your vertical asymptote is also x equal negative 3. So remember that this and this are related because in this one there is no hole of the graph. And then um, that graph just looks like it's slipped, shifted over to the left. Um, and then the horizontal asymptote was at 4 sevenths, which is a little less than half, or actually a little more than half. Uh, but that's right there. Okay, moving on. Um, this one is one that has x to the fourth in your numerator, and you have an x squared in your denominator. Our first step would be to, um, to set our denominator equal to zero. So x squared is 64, and x is plus or minus 8. Um, on this one, um, those are both going to be your vertical asymptotes because if we tried to factor anything out of our numerator, it wouldn't match the 8. And so I can say for certain um, that this has a vertical asymptote at plus and minus 8. If you want to graph it um, to confirm that, it would look like this parentheses x to the fourth power plus x squared plus 2. All of that divide by parentheses x squared minus 64. Um, so right now it just looks like um, an upside down parabola that might be a little extra wide or something. But if we go zoom out down here, It's, it's different than um, others because it doesn't, let me show you the comparison. If we do negative x squared, that gets wider and wider, and this one gets more and more narrow. Um, and so that's the difference. And also you see that at 8 it's undefined. And then here at 9 it jumped up to 390 and then it started going down again. So uh, that's really a random function.
menu for a okay so when I did zoom fit which is menu 4a um, you can see the line I was uh, referring to up there so it not only has the um, the part below the x-axis but it also has a part above so that's going to be this one now there is no horizontal or oblique asymptote since there's a parabola or parabolic asymptote but they don't ask you to get that so um, that's all right we'll just move on on this one set your denominator equal to zero and so we have x squared minus 36 equals zero x squared is 36 so x is plus or minus six again to set your denominator equal to zero that will be your first step all the time and that tells you your domain and in this case it also tells you your vertical asymptote um, and again since it's based on x over x squared that's proper um, so a horizontal asymptote y equals zero and it would look like that so these are pretty repetitive Um, on this one, you have 10 in the numerator and 9 in x squared minus 4 in your denominator. So let's set each part equal to 0. x squared minus 4 equals 0. x squared is 4. x is plus or minus 2. So all three of those are going to be where it's undefined. And all three of those are going to be where you have asymptotes. Again, like we said before, if it's proper, because this simplifies down to 10 over x cubed, um, it's proper, so you have a horizontal asymptote at 0. And then let's do the graph for that. Ten divide by parentheses. Remember I do a double parentheses if I have something complicated like that? x minus 9 and then x squared minus 4. Okay, so you have the 2 that you were expecting at negative 2 and positive 2, and then you also have this other one at 9. So in a way, I mean not completely, but in a way it reminds me of a trig function, um, which you would get to later. Um, I think it's going to look like either cosecant or secant. I think it'd be more like secant. Yeah. Uh, see the red graph? It's pretty similar to that expression where it's up here and then you know, down in other places. Okay, so then uh, that would be the A graph in this case. Okay, finally on this one, it's a little bit different where you have the numerator's exponent is bigger. Um, remember, they still recommended you um, factoring. Let's first set our denominator equal to zero to give us this answer and this answer. And um, for the numerator, that has x squared minus 13x minus 14 so that could be factored into minus 14 and plus 1 because you have 1x minus 14x for your middle which is negative 13x um, so that's your o and your i term um, your first term was x squared your last term was negative 14 Okay, so then it wants to know the horizontal or oblique asymptote. Uh, well, this one is not horizontal because the degree is not identical between the numerator and den denominator. It's oblique because the numerator is bigger. So how we do that is like on 4, 4, 
we do long division. In this case, there's no zero placeholders needed. So you put your um, x plus 4 out here, and you put your x squared minus 13x minus 14 there. So this is where the numerator goes, and that's where the denominator goes. So then we put x here, so we go x squared plus 4x. Now we're subtracting because, again, it's long division. So you get negative 17x minus 14. And then we get a negative 17 here for that first term to match, which is what we want. And this would be 17 times 4, which is 68. Um, and again, like we said yesterday, or on 4-4, four, four, um, it's okay to have a remainder other than zero on the long division. Um, our remainder would have been whatever negative 14 plus 68 is, which is 54. So this part is our answer, and that's right there. So let's graph that function. Let's go to x squared minus 13x minus 14. Divide by parentheses x plus 4. So there's your graph um, to begin with. Now, um, on these, the window is basically from negative 18 to 32. So I'll do menu 4, 1, from negative 18 to 32. And then for the y part, I'm going to put negative 7 to 33. Um, so then it's like that. Um, Oh, you know what? That looks like negative 7 to me, but that's actually negative 71. Because that would make sense. Um, there we go. Okay, so this is negative 71 for your Y man. And so then you can see that line. And I can press tab and go x minus 17. And that's your slant asymptote. So on this part, it's not really affecting it. But on this side, it's approaching the slant asymptote. Kind of like it's drawn to it like a magnet. And then on this side also. Okay, um, on this one, uh, we set our denominator equal to zero. So we have x is negative five, which would tell you your, where your domain is undefined, and it would tell you where your vertical asymptote is. And then we just need to do our long division again. So we have x squared plus x minus 110, and we have x plus five. So my thought process on this is x squared divided by x is x. So then you go x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Then we subtract, and so this would be negative 4x minus 110. Uh, so that's going to be the most common mistake, because on your own you might have said x plus 5x is 6x, but we want negative 4, because long division involves subtraction and then you put your minus four here to make the front match and then this would be negative 90 because that changes to plus um, so then let's graph it x 
x squared plus x minus 110, x plus 5. So again, these have your numerator exponent bigger, which is why it has a slant asymptote. Now this window um, doesn't show you much. We have to change these from negative 22 to 20. Those are kind of random numbers. Um, and then from negative 27 to 27. And so now you can see it looks like that. So if we plug in our x minus 4, um, that's your slant asymptote that we're talking about. So again, it's drawn toward it like a magnet on both ends. And then you have your asymptote that's vertical. Uh, remember, by the way, I don't think I've said it this year, um, but if you need to graph your vertical line, you would press delete and then say relation and put x equal negative 5. So that's your, um, that's your vertical asymptote. Um, I think that's going to be a good stopping point for this video. Hope you have a great day.